Hunter Army Airfield kicks off the holidays. Celeste Benton advances to the finals of Operation Rising Star. And talent auditions are happening in Hinesville. Welcome to this week's Martin Report. I'm Caitlin Kenny. And I'm Sergeant Bob Yarbrough with 4th Brigade Public Affairs. Hunter Army Airfield kicked off their holiday festivities with the annual FedEx Trees for Troops program. The event provides soldiers and family members a chance to pick out a tree for Christmas. Volunteers from 3rd Combat Aviation Brigade helped to support the event. Photojournalist Zach Renstrom brings us more. <laughs> I love giving back to people, especially families. I've been on the other end, so for me, it has, it has meaning to me. It can be hard, it can feel lonely sometimes, and then you realize that you're spending it, hopefully with some good battle buddies that are going through the same thing as you, and you guys get to have a little special moment, but it makes the next year that you have with your family even better and more special. Having all the family gather around it, it's really a symbol of everybody coming together for me. What we wanted to do is add a little something to the tree lighting ceremony to make this a more grandiose event. All of our volunteers tonight are Club Beyond folks, the folks from the chapel, the boss program. It takes a special breed of a person to give of themselves during their off time for the greater good of the community. And I just couldn't be prouder as a Garrison Star Major here. It's important for me because my last unit, I was in Korea, so a lot of us weren't able to spend Christmas with our family members because we were in Korea and it was expensive to come back home. It feels great for me to give back to the community and to other people that can spend Christmas together with their family. I'm looking to see the smiles on the children's faces when they receive their Christmas tree and it's just that much closer to being on Christmas morning, waking up and seeing the presents. The Christmas tree symbolizes for me the family coming together for a short time, but a special time. What do you want? I think tonight went outstanding. We've got folks coming from all walks of the installation. Many folks, I would venture to say that our numbers were equal to Fort Stewart for our tree lighting event and, and here at our tree giveaway. Uh, the line is still go down the street. Fort Stewart also rang in the holiday season with their own tree lighting ceremony at Club Stewart. Brigadier General James Blackburn, along with some helpers, flipped the switch to light the Christmas tree. Photojournalist Zach Renstrom has more. Since the war started back in 2001 uh, to 2003, many of the families have been separated three, four times uh, Christmas. So. Across the board, soldiers and families take the holiday season extremely serious and, and, and spend a lot of time and effort in making that a special holiday season. That's really what we're, we're here to do today, is make sure that the families understand, as an installation, as an Army family, how important it is to come together and, and be one on the holiday, during the holidays. There's no way I can explain in words what it is to be with my family. A couple of times I've, uh, I've deployed, they have uh, been by themselves and uh, I thank God for the protection, for keeping them and uh, bringing us back safely. It is so wonderful to see so many families together at Christmas time, at this time when they can share this time together and just the spirit of Christmas. I'm really overwhelmed with joy and happiness for these families that get to be together. Your Army family really is your family. You grow very close to those around you and especially those in the community that become our friends that are even not in the military. They become very close friends and we cherish those moments with them and those friendships and those relationships. And certainly for any of us that are in the Army um, serving, it, it's important to have that family away from home. Home is where the heart is. And I can tell you it's very great this year because it's the first time in the last several years anybody can remember that 98% of the division is actually right here at home at Hinesville, Fort Stewart, and Montgomery Hill. So enjoy yourselves because we certainly will enjoy ourselves as we are home this year in our community with our families because home is where the heart is. 
Celeste Benton is an Army spouse competing against five others in the 2014 Operation Rising Star competition. Celeste won the Fort Stewart Hunter Army Airfield Rising Star competition in October. This week we take a look back at her journey to become a Rising Star and also a glimpse at her performances in the 2014 Rising Star competition. Photojournalist Zach Renstrom has more. Lord, I will lift my hands. Cause you made me feel, you made me feel, you made me feel like a natural woman. Singing is my passion. I love what I do, I and mean, I thought it'd be a great opportunity um, to have a platform that I would not typically have and to meet new people. You make me feel so alive. I love to sing because it's when I feel most effective. I do a lot of singing in church. Um, I'm actually a praise and worship leader, and when I sing, it's when I feel closest to God. Um, it's when I feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, so I feel at home. I'm a very energetic and happy person. I love to give everything that I have every time that I touch a microphone. The message that I sing is often about joy and love and peace and hope. I try to exude that not only in the words that I sing, but in the way that I sing them. I love playing the support role for my husband. He is my hero. Times are good or bad, happy or sad. What do you do to kind of fight off the, just the jitters? When I get nervous, I use it to push me. I always say when you're nervous about something, it means that you care about what you do. So just use that care and use that passion and let it reflect in your voice. Oftentimes, a lot of the things that I would like to do, I have to kind of put on the back burner because I want to be there for him. So just this opportunity to showcase who I am and what I know that I'm gifted to do. Is one that I would not um, I could not have asked for. It's amazing. I'm, I'm truly blessed. I want you to run and sing the song. It builds your cardiovascular system and it also forces you to breathe deeper. You can't help but breathe deeper. <laughs> and I will run with you. Yes, I will do okay? it too. And you can run mm -hmm. with us too, baby. I will. <laughs> uh, Worry about a day. You reinvented the melody in spots to serve your range. And you made it look effortless and seamless, and I didn't miss those notes. And that, that's really, that's an interesting uh, artistic challenge, and you pulled it off. So I think exceptional job. Don't you worry about a thing. You're a very smart singer. You're very intelligent and you're very creative about it. So I'm like Sergeant Major, I'm looking forward to what you're going to do next because you have such great pitch and tonality. That's why this song just works with all the, the lines like Michael was, was mentioning. But you did a great job uh, and, and a very courageous job of pulling this off. Very courageous, I liked it. 
for your overwhelming support, for voting, for watching, for sharing, for tagging, for reposting. I could not have asked for um, a better support system. You guys are um, flooding me with your love and I, I cannot tell you thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you enough. If you're a civilian employee and need help with work or home life, the Employee Assistance Program can help. The program is designed to help you work through tough problems from work or home that may be affecting you. They have the resources to help. For more information, call 912-767-5828 or 912-767-5974. Georgia's Zero Tolerance campaign against drunk driving started December 12th. Motorists will see increased patrols and higher visibility of law enforcement on the roads. If you're found to be over the limit, you'll be arrested. No warnings, no excuses. During the holiday period last year in Georgia, from November 20th to December 31st, there was nearly 44,000 crashes that resulted in over 13,000 injuries and 160 fatalities. 18 of those fatalities lost their lives to impaired drivers. Let's take a stand and stop drunk driving. On average, 31% of all crash fatalities in America are alcohol related. On Christmas Day in 2012, that number increased to 36%. The safety of the community is important to Team Stewart. From December 1st to the 7th, there was one DUI in 3rd ID. Don't let alcohol end your career. Have some Marn pride and don't drink and drive. Coming up on the Marn Report, Club Stewart is ringing in the new year. When you try your best, but you don't succeed. When you get what you want, but not what you need When you feel so tired But you can't He's sleep not one of us. <laughs> In reverse <laughs> Tears come streaming down your face And you lose something can't replace Lights will guide you home And I will try to fix you Are you looking for some fun things to do with your family? Then let's check in with Martha Jackson from FMWR's Club Stewart, who is standing in for Molly Cook this week. She's here to give us some more information on an upcoming event. Hi, I'm Martha Jackson and this is your MWR Minute. Usher in 2015 in style with the upcoming New Year's Eve party at Club Stewart from 9 until 1 a.m. on December 31st. The evening will feature a live R&B band, a midnight champagne toast, party hats and party favors, as well as a balloon drop, just to name a few. The cost is $25 per person and the party is open to active duty, retirees and civilians. In addition, to help you celebrate responsibly, telephone numbers for local taxi services will be posted throughout the club during the event and the AAA Tow to Go program will also be available if needed. For more information, give the club a call at 912-767-4717. To learn more about MWR events, visit us online at www.stewartmwr.com or www.huntermwr.com. FMWR, we're your complete destination for families, fun, and fitness. The Main Post Chapel's Multicultural Gospel Service is sponsoring auditions for the Celebrating Youth Celebrity Talent Showcase. If you or your child are between the ages of 5 and 19 and you want to show that you can sing, act, dance, rap, play an instrument, or tell some jokes, LA producers want to see it. The audition is Sunday, January 17th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Liberty Performing Arts Center in Hinesville. Everyone is welcome to attend. To register, call 323-871-8554 or visit their website at celebratingyouth.net. And as we find ourselves in the middle of the holiday season, what better time than now to learn a little bit about party and table etiquette? Elvia Kelly has more. 
Hi, I'm Olivia Kelly. You might know me from On the Frontline for the Marnie Report, but today I'm here with Martha Jackson. She is the catering manager at Club Stewart, and she's going to go over table setting etiquette and party planning. Thank you so much, Elvia. I'm excited to speak with you. Well, first we're going to discuss proper table setup. What I have here is as close to a formal table setup as you'll have in this area. We don't do it where it's very casual, laid back atmosphere in the south. Um, but what we have today is, I'd say, just like a nice um, evening, evening setup for a nice dinner. Okay, so if I go into a restaurant, um, and I see that there is a table set up. I think fancy. How can you show someone don't be scared of the setup? Very simple. Um, basically, each one of these items here are just, they're utilitarian. They're just, they have a good use. Um, you've got your teaspoon, your soup spoon, your salad knife and fork, simple steak knife and your dinner knife. And honestly, I mean, it, I know it looks complicated and you think, oh gosh, like this is just too much, I'm overwhelmed. But really it's not each item has a, has a place. It's the best way to eat your, your eat the food that you are being served. You've got your, your bread knife. You don't want to mix your bread knife with your salad knife. You don't want the bread, um, the butter flavoring your salad. So we, you keep those items separate with other utensils. And I see that we have the coffee cup here and it's angled this way. So I'm assuming that I can just grab the cup. Yes, yes. Okay. When you're setting a place at or setting up a, a table for your guests, there are certain certain directions each thing goes in. Your coffee cup, um, if you set your table correctly, will always have your handle at five o'clock. You always place your water glass atop your knife and your wine glass slightly below and to the right. And it's all about ease of service. You, like you said, you easily pick up your coffee cup. You reach up and grab your wine. It's all, it's all separate, kept separate, and then it's just easy. Okay, Martha, mm -hmm. so I'm going to have a five-course meal. When they bring out the plate, which fork should I use, and what are the rest of the plates? Well, first of all, you've got your charger on the bottom, just to add a little bit of, you know, flair, pizzazz to your table. They're going to bring out, if you're doing a five-course dinner, most likely your salad. You've already enjoyed your hors d'oeuvres while you were mingling with your guests. So when they bring out your salad, you've, you've picked up your napkin. You're going to, they'll, they'll place your salad right here and your first fork. You always start on the outside and you work your way in. The same over here, you start on the outside and work your way in. So you've got your teaspoon to stir your tea with. Um, once you add your sugar or sweetener, um, if you need a knife with your salad, you go to the first knife on the end and you've got your, your salad knife. So that's your first course. You know, and once you're finished with each course, you will lay your fork and knife down at the 5 o'clock and 8 o'clock positions and your server will know to pick up your plate and move on to the next course. So I noticed your napkin on the side. Where does it go? Well, good question. Um, I know some may think that um, it is a shrimp boil so <laughs> they sit down no matter what they're doing but napkin does not go in your shirt. Napkin does not go, you know, tossed on the table and casually picked up to dab. When you take your napkin off of your place setting, you want to just casually place it across your lap. When you, if you're in a formal environment, you want to ever so casually dab lightly. You have to think, you know, how you're representing yourself your family, if you're with your family, your company, if you're with your company, and just remain elegant at all times. Even your napkin sends off symbols and, and signs of you know how, how of, of the image you want to present. So we've discussed the first course. So once they clear your salad and they move on to your next course, let's say it's a delicious soup. So they've brought the soup out. You've got your soup again on the far, you want to start on the right. We've used this to stir our tea with. We've got our teaspoon that I've moved. The very next spoon would be our soup spoon. So when they drop down the soup, you're going to just enjoy your soup with the spoon. And again, you'll just place it inside the bowl once it's done and they will pick it up and head on out. So Surely but slowly, the forks and the spoons and the utensils yes. are leaving as, yes. as the dishes are gone. Mm -hmm. Yes, you don't keep them there. I mean, you can if you want to, but it's just a mess and there's no point. So remember, you always leave them in the same position. Um, now, if you're if you are dining by the international etiquette, if you're using those protocols, um, you will place your instead of this time, I they place them like this, so that your their servers know my meal is over. I can pick up the plate, 
and bring out the next course. And that's good to know for those who are traveling internationally. Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Um, and again, we so we've discussed everything, but I'm going to say the, the dessert forks and the dessert spoon. When you're setting your tables for your guests, you want to make sure that you have your dessert fork and your dessert spoon facing the right direction. Again, these things may not mean anything to 60-70% of the guests, but there's always that 30% that are going to come to your party and go, they're smart. They've got their stuff in order. So it's, it's the little things that matter. Um, you want to remember that your fork, you want to place the, the handle end pointing to the left and think of it as if um, your car backing into a driveway. You're just gonna want to make sure that it, this is the direction that the handle's pointing. The same with the, the spoon. The spoon, the handle's always on the right side. I believe I heard once, dessert is right. Put it on the right side. <laughs> um, just, and just, you, know, you want to make sure it's always in the exact place. Okay, Pretty. and during this five course meal, at one point, mm -hmm. does the bread come out so that you can use the bread knife? Um, the bread comes out, it just depends on the situation. You've got folks who will bring out the bread in the very beginning with your salad. Um, I know some of the restaurants that you go to will bring out you know, like a basket of bread or they bring it out, you know, before anything comes out. The appropriate way is when your salad comes out, you have your bread to, to eat with your salad. Um, usually there's a butter either a butter rosette or a butter pad um, that's placed at, um, it's, I believe it's 6 o'clock right there. So you have your butter in your hand and you just pick it up and you, there you butter go. your bread. It's nice and elegant. The thing that I have to, that, that I like to, to impress on everyone is setting up, when you're doing a setup of one table, two tables, ten tables, you want to make sure that it's always the same. Every place setting looks exactly the same. If you realize I, I, I only have, you know, I've got 15 people coming, I only have seven salad forks, well then figure something, do something different. Don't use seven salad forks and seven, you know, spoons or whatever. I mean, you want it to be the same because even if, even if it's not important to everyone, like I said, it says a lot about you and it shows that you care about your guests. Okay. You care enough to make a difference and give them the right setup. After our five course meal and we're mm -hmm. finished, that normally is associated with a party. Yes. Now what tips and advice do you have to those out there who may want a party plan for something important? I would say you want to focus on your guest list. You need to look, you, the most important factors are going to be your guest list. Why? Because you want to, before you can consider your menu, before you can consider your budget, you have to think about who's coming to your party. What kind of foods do they like to eat? Do they have allergies? Do they have certain trendy fascinations with foods that you want to focus on to either impress them or make them feel special? Once you have an idea of who's coming and what they can and cannot eat, you want to sit down and create a menu, a recipe item, a recipe of the different uh, menu items you're going to be offering and create a budget. You want to, just because you're having a party doesn't mean we want to break the bank. I mean there is life after that party, there want, you want to have more parties, so we have to do this reasonably, we have to be sensible, so we create a budget, we look at you know, what you're going to be serving to all of your guests, um, and, and you just make sure that yeah, you've put, it's a well thought out planned event. So at what point do we consider, say, the color of the napkins that we use, or the tablecloth, or the flowers? We want to think about the theme of your party. If you're hosting a birthday party for your 10-year-old, what are her favorite colors? What does she want to work into the theme? If her favorite colors are purple and black, but she wants a frozen party, you know, you want to think, how, how can you work all that in? Because you want your theme and your, you know, their favorite colors for the linen to match. So that's, it's, it's usually after, I would say, after you've considered your menu and all that, because that's very important, after you've considered your menu and your budget and your guest list, then you want to start thinking about themes and colors and, you know, what kind of napkin to use, um, what kind of tablecloth, things of that nature. And when I, when I host parties, when I plan parties with my guests, like I take multiple things into consideration. If we are at an off-venue site before we really establish what we're going to do for decorations. We need to look at, you know, the walls, the flooring, the ceiling, like what will go well with it? Do you want to walk into a room and go, ugh, because like it's, you know, the colors are just jarring because what you've chosen doesn't match the room. You want to make sure that everything you do is within keeping of the whole picture. You know, it, again, it's well, like, while you want to make sure there's a life after that party, you got to plan, you know, we don't want to go too overboard. At the same time, you want your guests to feel like they are the most important person to you 
in that two to five hour time frame there with you in your event. And that means taking all of these things into consideration. And that means that we have um, a strategy and we have to yes. schedule way in advance to plan for something yes. like this. Strategy, yes, and that's a good way to look at it. I mean, even event planning, it may not be, you know, fighting a war or any of that, but event planning is a very strategic thing because you want to make sure everyone's happy, everyone is safe, food allergies, you gotta think about that. And um, again, that they, everybody is happy and wants to come around for the next party. <laughs> I'm Elga Kelly. I'm Martha Jackson. Ciao! To find out what's happening across Fort Stewart and Hunter Army Airfield, we turn to the Frontline newspaper. Let's check in with Managing Editor Elvia Kelly for this week's news. Hi, I'm Elvia Kelly and I'll be giving you the latest details from the Frontline. For the December 11th edition, check out the front page story where our 3rd ID soldiers deployed to Afghanistan and held an uncasing of the colors ceremony. Through a series of photos and a story, the behind the lens page gives an inside look of a training exercise called China Focus 2. Soldiers from 3rd Cab and 4th Brigade work together in support of that mission. And last but not least, check out page 1B, our community and leisure page, where 3rd ID soldiers ring in the holidays through a series of Christmas events. In November 2013, 3rd ID soldiers lined control field at Fort Stewart and were greeted with open arms after a long deployment in Afghanistan. Less than 13 months later, the 3rd ID headquarters deployed again and uncased their colors during a ceremony at Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. Around 200 soldiers from the Marne Division have become part of the 9,800 U.S. troops that will remain in Afghanistan after NATO's International Security Assistance Force mission ends. The air crews from 4th Assault Helicopter Battalion, 3rd Aviation Regiment provided 12 Black Hawk helicopters in support of the 3rd Battalion 15th Infantry Regiment in their training exercise dubbed China Focus 2. From marching and parades to receiving a Christmas tree from Trees for Troops, soldiers from across the division participated in local parades. Join us on the Marne Report to catch the most current news and events found on the front line across Fort Stewart, Hunter Army Airfield, and online at our Frontline website at stewartfrontline.com. Coming up, soldiers participate in the Richmond Hill Christmas Parade. You are dealing with pain, anger, a heaviness. It feels like there is no way out. It seems like you are in this by yourself, battling alone. But you are part of one army family, shoulder to shoulder with a community there to get you through these hard times. There is no shame, no guilt in seeking out help. So if you are struggling, feeling depressed, or even having thoughts of suicide, it is time to talk to someone. Your army family is committed to finding you the strength and hope you need to rebound from adversity. Because above all else, our most essential resource is you. One of the many events to kick off the Christmas season in the Lowcountry was the 19th annual Richmond Hill Christmas Parade. Richmond Hill residents came out in the morning fog to claim their spot to watch the parade go by. 3rd Infantry Division troops with the 1st Armor Brigade Combat Team, 3rd Brigade Support Battalion, led the parade with a color guard and marching unit. The community cheered and waved to the parade participants, which numbered close to 80 floats and displays. This year's event was one of three in Richmond Hill to start the Christmas season. The others were a chili cook-off, a lighted boat parade, and a fireworks show. That's all for this week's Marn Report. You can watch the Marn Report in the morning at 5, 5.30, and 8 and 8.30, noon and in the evening at 5 and 5.30, 9 and 11. Or, as always, check us out on the web at stuart.army.mil or on Vimeo at vimeo.com slash thirdid. Have a great week. Rock, Rock of the, the Marn. Marn.